everyone welcome back to five day crypto today we're going to look at Chainlink. uh we're going to cover Chainlink again because i feel like i have a lot of followers that specifically follow me for Chainlink. so we're going to update the majority of you uh and then we'll look at other coins maybe for the rest of the week um let me know what you want to see next um if you like the video today give us a thumbs up follow us on telegram we have a free telegram if i'm not posting on youtube sometimes i'll post little snippets clips tips tricks things on there so go do that. It's linked below. And if you want more help than that, uh, we have a Patreon. It's a private Telegram. Access to the private Telegram. That's how you do that. If you want, you know, help navigating the rest of the market, know when it's overheated, when it's a good time to maybe buy and sell, uh, specific coin requests. That's what all that is for. So if you want to try that out, there you go. So let's get right ahead into Link on the weekly chart. I want to start off with this one for the big picture and to just plain and simple look at it with link with time generally trends up right if you this whole life it basically goes up however link also has time periods where it just basically consolidates for longer than most other coins as you can see right see so this box we're going to get to that in a minute we're going to look at support and resistance uh tops and bottoms all that good stuff so but just as a general outlook i mean just look at this after it makes these big runs uh, it basically just trends sideways for a while, right? Uh, you could look at this time and time again. Look at look at these movements, like for you know over a year. It's just basically the same price, and today is no different, right? We're basically at the same levels we were uh, over a year ago. So it's not new. It's nothing abnormal for Link. Link just generally tends to wait extra long to get it moving. So. Are we, are we, do we have a bunch more to drop with Link or are we about done? Well, I'm going to show you some evidence today that if you're a fan of Chainlink and you're married to Chainlink, that you might like. That uh, maybe says the bottom might not, may or may not be in, but I think we are close to a macro level bottom for Link. And we're going to look at the charts, not just my opinion. We're going to let the charts do the talking. So pay attention. <laughs> All right. So here's what we got. This is our green box. And this is where I think we should relatively range, you know, until we can close back above our 21 week EMA. This is on the weekly chart now. So until we can get price action back above here like this and start holding support, then I think we're going to just be ranging in, in here uh, for, I don't know how long. Could be a couple of weeks, could be a month or two. Okay, so what, where are the tops and bottoms of this? And why do we draw it here specifically? This isn't random lines. Why? Well, the bottom is this wick, right? So this is the bottom of wick from last July, from July, from a handful of months back, right? So we wick down where the low is, 1338. So that's where we drew the bottom of the box. Why? If we lose that level, we wick lower, that's a lower low. And then you're shifting towards a downtrend. So although we're in a you know short term downtrend, this would switch to a macro term downtrend if we in fact break outside of this box with even a wick. If you want to learn more about uh, where we could potentially get to that point is if you would close a candle under this candle, right? We close the week. This is our lowest closing candle. All of 2021, basically, since our uptrend right here, this closed at 1547. So if we close lower than that, then your radar should be going up, your spidey sense. Okay, so that, that's time to pay attention. If we close lower than that, you want to really watch the wick then, okay? Now, if we if I don't anticipate us going under this, okay? I don't I don't think the odds are there. Uh we're pretty low across a lot of indicators. I don't know if uh you know this candle we've already hit 1672. I don't know if that's the macro level low or are we gonna go back down and kind of double bottom area, okay? I don't know what the future is going to hold. Nobody does, right? All you have in crypto is charts and playing the odds off of those charts. That's it. Anybody that tries to guarantee certain things, that crypto and guarantee should not be mentioned in the same sentence ever. There is no guarantee. Anybody that says guarantee and crypto, something related to that, you should be running for the hills. <laughs> okay, so why is the top of the box? Well, look at the wicks over here. August 2020, uh, we made our peak just above $20. Got some wicks in here. We have our big macro level drop in May that closed right at the top of that as well. Okay, so support and resistance on a weekly time scale. And we're also trying to battle that area right now. We tried to close right around that $20 level. So far, we've lost it a bit. And now we're 
in this just kind of rain zone. I, I, I anticipate us staying here until you see a weekly close above this 21 week. And it does we don't have to go back to 25.50, right? Uh, this will trend down week over week over week now. So in the next handful of weeks going into 2022, it could very well be, you know, close to $20. So watch that on the weekly. How about for a shorter time scale? The daily. Let's look at the daily chart. This pattern is not a bullish pattern. See the see the golden arches? There's nothing good about golden arches. Um uh, so wh when do we, when do we get the warning sign? Now th these are kind of little patterns, but unfortunately for patterns you have to wait for the, them to play out to confirm it. You can't anticipate patterns because they don't have to ever play out. You just have the odds like we've talked about. So when do we when did the odds increase of us doing these double arch bearish pattern? Right here. We see our little macro little uptrend, a little micro I should say micro uptrend. Uh, we we broke this right here and you see how we battled back up and got rejected right off of that trend line right a couple touch points back in here and then we broke it and then we got rejected again that increases the odds of this m pattern bearish little bit of a bearish pattern playing out and that's when we did it right back in uh kind of mid-november right there um so the and that still doesn't mean that you have to go all the way down here it's just your odds have increased and that's where we are right now so what do we have to look for? We have to break that ground trend. So you can take your, well, <laughs> take your right tool. Let's start with that. And then just redraw your little trend line. And until we break that with the same thing, well, let's move the, Let's move this 21 day. You want to get above the 21 day as well to make price action. But until we can break back above this, just like we did before, two daily candles above that line, then our downtrend remains. So watch for that. Put that on the daily chart. When we break above it, just like we broke below that uptrend, you want to break above this downtrend. And then when we do that, then there's a light at the end of the tunnel, maybe. So then we can start battling back up to our uptrend and redraw an uptrend line, just like we did back here. Okay, so that's the daily chart. Let's go look and see what else we got. The Gaussian channel, the five-day Gaussian channel. If you followed us at all, you know that I'm a big believer in the five-day Gaussian channel. The five day is more accurate than any other time frame. So you can use weekly. I'd much prefer you use the weekly chart uh, and the five day versus like the, the five day and the daily. The daily has a lot of fake outs. They can tell you a little bit of where bullish price and bearish price, you know, kind of where you are. But the five day is the secret sauce. So use the five day if you can. So uh, Chainlink historically has, has, has held very nice support on the five day at the bottom. Where are we now? We're very near the bottom, aren't we? The bottom of that channel is roughly 1650. So you notice that we have we did wick outside of it just a little bit uh, back in July. So we could do that, right? This doesn't even have to hold it all. But like I said, historically, Chainlink is very respectful to that bottom line, not just that touch point, right? Let's go back. Well, we've already came down before back in early December, a couple weeks ago. And we avoided that as well. But let's go back even further and see where Chainlink has interacted before that. Look right here, right? Our wicks down from our pandemic drop. It's still not to the very bottom. Okay, let's go back further. How about before? Look at this. This is our lowest we've been. And still, even with the channel being red, you might ask if you're new, how does the channel turn red? You just get a downtrend, right? As soon as it starts going down, it flips red. And then if you go red, it's okay. It just means like more consolidation. Uh, you want to wait for it to turn green. And then not only that, you want your price action on top. And then historically, it's been a good time to buy, not just on link, any coin ever. Uh, once you, if you flip red, go back green, wait for prices to hit outside the channel. And it's a buy. It's like a blind buy. It doesn't matter where, you, where it is. Uh, it just works time and time again. So look at this look how respectful link is to that bottom of that gaussian channel going all the way back to i mean 2018 so we're looking at june 2018 over three years of data here so there's a first time for everything sure uh but i like our odds of holding somewhere around that level um if we continue down this could be the bottom the bottom could already be in you know we've wicked down to that low of 1672 and you know maybe that's maybe that's it uh, maybe not. Maybe we come down and go down to 15, 
50. As long as we don't wick lower than that and have a, a lower low, structurally we're good and intact and link can continue its macro level uptrend, period. Okay, so don't read too much into it. Follow the charts. Follow your heart. I don't know. All right, so last thing I have for you for Link before we get to the Crypto Fear and Greed, Car of the Day, and Quote of the Day. Uh, Link on the weekly RSI. Where are we? I'm glad you asked. Look at this. We're at roughly 40 on the weekly RSI. You might say, who the hell cares about that, Chase? You should. Why? Let's zoom out. Let's zoom out and get the good news here, folks. Ooh, historically, uh, anytime Link is down this low, and it's not often, and we've only been down here one time in history. Are we, are we seeing? Are we seeing the level here? Now, like I said, first time for everything. Sure, could we go below it? Sure. However, I think the macro level weekly RSI is roughly here. So even if we go a little bit lower. I think the rough prices, you know, 15, that 15 ish bottom, 1550, $16, right at that Gaussian channel, the bottom of the Gaussian channel. A lot of indicators saying similar things. That's what you want to look for. You don't want to have just one indicator. You don't want to go just off the RSI or just off of a moving average. But if you have multiple things like the five day Gaussian channel saying a bottom could be near, uh, the weekly RSI saying the bottom could be near, um, the daily RSI is pretty overplayed, right? We're, we're pretty low here. We hit historical lows on the daily. We're still low. So when your RSI is this low, it's oversold. There's more people selling than buying. That's what that means. And uh, almost everyone was selling back in here, right? So smart money usually waits for these, these dips to be buying at historical times, which not that often, as you see. March 2020, the pandemic drop. Uh, September 2020, Link's final capitulation. And then July, when Link was at $13, and we just went below it again. So are we at the bottom of the price? I don't know. I don't care. We're near the bottom of the price. And you, by timing the tops, trying to time selling the tops, and try to time buying the bottoms, usually will get you destroyed in the long run. Maybe you'll do it once or twice perfect right you can juggle knives a few times perfect but it only takes once to uh ingrain that in your brain that maybe don't do that again so uh i've i've missed on a lot of money by trying to time the bottoms and uh missing it i remember i did it with ethereum with a considerable amount of money and i missed buying into ethereum when it was like around a hundred dollars um by about 11 cents i think <laughs> pretty accurate pretty by 11 cents on my buy order uh because i trying to time the bottom and yeah that was that was a lot of money uh, i missed out on but still still recovered and uh just my whole point is don't be greedy with your sales or your buys so it, you you rarely want to be selling when your rsi is low and you rarely want to be buying when your rsi is high however that's what the majority of people do which is why we have a fear and greed index uh, you see that roll that that roll into this uh, 28 we're at, we're 28 we're still in fear we're out of extreme fear no more nightmares for now just bad dreams so going down here how long can we stay here well back in May June July we were here for a while right now I think we could be down here for another several days to weeks I don't anticipate you know two or three months like this I, I think maybe around half of that if the odds, the odds in my book from, from this guy is another couple of weeks, maybe a month, maybe, you know, give or take, but a lot of volatility. I think, you know, 20% to the upside, 20% to the downside, rinse and repeat over and over until you just can't take it anymore. And then usually when you least expect it up. Okay. Enough of that. Quarter of the day, quarter of the week. Because I'm doing the same damn quote every day this week. Because it's you need to remember it. Warren Buffett. I'm sure you've heard of him. Uh, the stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. All right. Card of the day. 
we got to get back to some supercars. Been covering some randos lately, which I like, but nothing, nothing says, nothing speaks to me like supercars. And speaking of super, the 812 Ferrari super fast. Yes, it's called a super fast. Uh, 812 super fast. Um, one of the nicer Ferraris for the new, the new age style, right? I like the high ends, like the La Ferraris, but um, some of the new ones are getting a little too similar to me. I don't know. Uh, but Ferraris are cool. I prefer Lambo and McLaren. Uh, but this is probably one of my favorite ones that's out right now for the newer ones. Uh, it has Look at all the arrow on here. If you're a car guy, I mean, uh, not a lot of Ferraris until you get to those higher end ones, like million dollar plus, have this kind of aerodynamics. Look at this. How the carbon like wraps around this outside. Look at the air channel in here. This is all carbon around the whole entire car. Even the back has skirts. Freaking huge tires and wheels. Uh, look at this in here in the hood. Amazing design by Ferrari on this one, in my opinion. It's probably one of my favorites. Uh, this exact spec. Yellow calipers, yellow brake calipers, yellow paint. Look at the carbon mirrors. Love that. The, it's like carbon and painted. That's pretty rare. I've never seen that. And the prancing horse embroidered on the uh, on the on the seats inside. Lots of carbon on this one inside as well, but amazing design and architecture on this one. I love it. What do you think? What's your favorite current day Ferrari? All right. That's it for this one. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed it a little bit, learned something a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. We'll see you on the next one. Happy Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday. See you on the next one.